the solar system remains one of the most unique elements existing in the cosmos, full of treasures and mysteries. One of these is the mysterious Sedna, a massive object recently discovered in the farthest reaches of our solar system. Officially known as 2003 VB12, this element is the most distant body known to orbit our Sun. It's presently about 90 AU's astronomical units away, three times farther than Pluto. Sedna has a diameter of approximately 1,800 kilometers, 800 to 1,100 miles, making it slightly smaller than Pluto. The most fascinating thing about Sedna is its orbit. Sedna's orbit is one of the longest in the solar system. Though it's yet to be accurately understood, Sedna's orbit is very eccentric. Better still, extremely long and irregular. It takes approximately 11,400 years to return to its closest point to the Sun at 76 AU. This categorizes it as an element from the inner edge of the Oort cloud known as Hill's Cloud, a small cluster of icy bodies beyond the outer reaches of the Kuiper Belt. Sedna is the first observable evidence of the long-hypothesized Oort Cloud. While the main Oort Cloud appears to be a huge spherical shell of comets that could stretch over a light year out from the Sun, the Hill's Cloud appears to be made up of larger, rockier objects like Sedna. Sedna and similar asteroids are most likely untouched remnants of the solar system's early days. Another distinguishing feature of this element is its size and a reddish tint. Sedna is the second reddest object in the solar system after Mars. We all know Mars to be the reddest object in the solar system, but Sedna is almost as red as Mars. Also, Sedna is estimated to be three-fourths the size of Pluto making it the largest object spotted in the solar system since Pluto was discovered in 1930. A group of researchers discovered this planet-like object in 2003. Brown, along with doctors Chad Trujillo of the Gemini Observatory Hawaii and David Rabinowitz of Yale University, found it using the 48-inch Samuel Oshin telescope at Caltech's Palomar Observatory near San Diego. Within a couple of days, other telescopes in Chile, Spain, Arizona, and Hawaii as well as NASA's new Spitzer Space Telescope captured the object. On September 13, 2022, the James Webb Telescope revealed new information about Sedna, confirming that its surface is one of the reddest in the solar system. Previous spectroscopy studies revealed that Sedna's surface composition is comparable to that of other trans-Neptunian objects, containing a mixture of water, methane, and nitrogen ices with tholins. Sedna falls in the same category as Ceres as the largest planetoid without a moon. Sedna is so far from the Sun that the strength of the rays of Sun reaching it are so weak, like a four thousandth of the intensity of what they are at Earth. Due to this, Sedna remains perpetually icy, with a temperature of negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and is void of air. Sedna is the coldest known location of our solar system, where temperatures never exceed minus 240 degrees Celsius minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Aside from being very cold, it's also inactive. Because of how cold it is, there's little or no geological activity at its surface. There are fewer impact craters, which explains why Sedna's surface may be quite smooth and uniform, probably one of the most pristine surfaces in the solar system untouched since its formation. There was also the question of how this object ended up in our solar system. Sedna cannot have been thrown into its current position by the gas giant's planet's gravitational slingshots due to its unusually elongated orbit, which never brings it particularly close to the Sun. Originally, it was assumed that Sedna was either pulled outwards by the force of gravity of a nearby star, or captured from another solar system entirely. However, all these are speculations. Sedna is a new neighbor among the stars, but definitely not the Planet X many scientists anticipated before Pluto's discovery. Planet X is expected to be much bigger. Sedna has yet to be officially classified as a planet. That classification decision is up to the IAU, and they're not likely to do so anytime soon. Indeed, there is an ongoing debate over whether Sedna is large enough to be considered a planet at all. This leads to the question of what parameters qualify an object as a planet. Scientists later admitted that there is no universal consensus on what makes an object a planet. Some claim that for an entity to be a planet, it must possess greater mass than the total mass of all things in its orbit. Others believe that the shape of an object's orbit separates it from comets or asteroids. Other astronomers believe that a planet is characterized by its roundedness, 
implying that it must have enough mass to be fashioned spherically. Otherwise, the object will be more of a potato-like shape, which makes it an asteroid. The discovery of Sedna has reignited a long-standing argument in the scientific field about whether Pluto should be classified as a planet. Most astronomers think that Sedna, if not our tenth planet, can be classified as a planetoid, or planet-like object. Sedna is spherical, it has a unique, albeit extremely slow, orbit around the Sun, and some evidence shows that it may even have its own moon. The truth is, we can only speculate. There are still many mysteries to be unraveled about this planet-like object. For example, its striking, shining red colors leave astronomers perplexed. Almost as red as Mars? But why? How is it possible? Unfortunately, no one has the answer to that. Whereas, should you be attempting to observe the Sun from Sedna's surface, the Sun is almost invisible, less visible than a tiny dot. According to researchers, there's the high probability that Sedna has a moon. Most of the massive dwarf planets, such as Pluto, Eris, and others, have at least one moon. So why won't Sedna have one? They assume that Sedna's moon has not been discovered, and that should not rule out the fact that it exists. Without a moon, scientists cannot determine the actual mass of Sedna, and its exact size is difficult to measure accurately, only estimates. They plan to investigate this possibility using NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. Though they started an in-depth analysis of the object's surface using one of the world's largest optical infrared telescopes, the 8-meter, 26-foot Frederick C. Gillette Gemini Telescope on Mauna Kea, Hawaii. We still don't know what's beneath its surface. It's unlike anything we could have imagined or explained, they stated. After all, Sedna may still have a subsurface ocean, kept warm by the leftover heat of its formation, coupled with the decay of radioactive elements in its core. However, to determine this, it would require a flyby probe, if not an orbiting mission. Sedna will get closer to Earth in the coming years, but even at its closest approach, it'll be in about 72 years from now, before it makes a U-turn and will begin its 11,000-year journey back to the far reaches of the solar system. The last time Sedna got this close to the Sun, Earth was just emerging from the last ice age. And who knows, maybe the world may be in an entirely different place the next time it returns, Brown stated. While there are currently no official missions to Sedna, scientists are clamoring for one. The best time to launch will be between 2029 and 2034. It's hard to overlook or ignore this unique planet-like object, because in addition to having an exceptionally large orbit as a dwarf planet, it could reveal mysteries lurking out there beyond our reach in the solar system. Luckily, the Russian Academy of Sciences Space Research Institute's Vladislav Zubko and his colleagues keep pressing to embark on this mission by 2029. They recently presented a paper at the Global Space Exploration Conference in which they calculated possible trajectories for Sedna. Sedna is too far away for Earth-based telescopes to conduct thorough studies of what's truly lurking on its surface, and even New Horizons was not on the same trajectory to see it. Sedna's orbit is so far it orbits mostly beyond the heliopause. To date, only Voyager 1 and 2 have ever gone beyond the heliosphere, which is the outer limit of the edge of the solar system. It's unknown whether Sedna is pristine as well as its age but a preliminary investigation has revealed it could also be harboring some strange chemicals on its surface, which could revolutionize our understanding of how the solar system formed. A simple flyover to such a distant celestial body will be a significant step forward in humanity's quest to understand interstellar space, how the solar system evolved, and what awaits us in the future.